it up on my screen over here too just to make sure it's in you guys might get uh, feedback just for one quick second and then i'll mute it out all right it says we're live in my top right hand corner i'm looking on youtube feed right now yep. all right awesome we are live hey what's going on everybody this is chad from cwc technologies Great to have everybody here. This is season two of Changing the Tech Scene. With me, I have a couple of special guests. Uh, we have one sick person with us, Samantha. Hey, guys. <laughs> so she, there's going to be no visual, but you will be able to hear her. Uh, we have Edit, who was here from last year's program. How you doing, Edit? Glad to have you back, brother. I'm doing great. I just hope um, our OG viewers tune in uh, to season two. It's going to be great. That's right, man. Good to have you again. And we have Jake, who is our mobile gaming expert. How you doing, Jake? I don't know about an expert, but I'm doing great. So excited to be here. Looking forward to getting to these topics, hanging out with you guys in the chat. That's awesome, man. Listen, a uh, quick shout out to our, our primary sponsor today. That is Slick Wraps. Make sure you guys check them out over at www.slickwraps.com. You can also use Coach CWC if you want to get in on some of their deals over there. Make sure you check that out. Stick around a little bit later. Um, we're also going to do a giveaway. Uh, we might give away two, but check this out. One of the cool things I want to show you guys before we get into the topics is not only do they have different skins for your phones, but also your devices. This is one of the coolest things I think I've seen, and uh, I need to get with them. And Jake, you're going to talk to us a little bit later about that Fortnite, but Slick Wraps has this amazing wrap for the Nintendo Switch. I don't know if anybody has seen that or not, but... There it is live on your screen. This is probably one of the coolest wraps I've ever seen if you're into the retro that, NES yes. look. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's sick, right? Yeah, it does indeed. Very cool. So again, thank you to Slick Wraps. And uh, without further ado, let's get into our show. So first topic of the day is the Essential Phone. Now, the funny thing with the Essential Phone, as you guys know, is they're already talking about they're not going to come out with another model. But here they are, they're going to launch uh, this new module, which is going to give us a magnetic headphone jack. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Now let's just have all the other phone manufacturers do that. <laughs> right? Yeah, I've always loved the whole you know, modular design. I wish more people would take advantage of it. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the Essential came out and kind of flopped. You can thank a couple yeah. of things. Camera, horrible. I <laughs> bought it first day. And it wasn't so much the camera, right? Because everybody's like, oh, it doesn't. It takes good pictures. Well, the problem was you'd take a picture and it would take like four seconds to buffer up <laughs> and be like oh. HDR and then go, okay, you're ready. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just remember on Twitter, everybody's like, oh, it's fine. The, the pictures are fine. Like, okay, take two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> you got 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so, the biggest thing with the essentials phone. I think they sold it? around like um, – 150k units um, on the Essential One. Was that right? Okay, thought it was less than that. I'm not I sure don't know. There's something around that number. It was it was wasn't very impressive. They were not uh, expecting to have that low of a response. But for a phone running pretty close to stock Android, performance as of the latest specs, so it was Snapdragon 835, four gigabytes of RAM, if I recall correctly. Don't think it got up to six. Pretty powerful hardware but just performance overall and software was so bad even just playing around with the sprint unit at the store everything was very sluggish and laggy compared to my note 8 not the samsung device you know you don't have the uh well uh how people consider samsung devices very laggy and slow so yeah it's essential really mess up with the software but it's great to see they're coming out with the headphone jack adapter are you gonna have uh, I believe a DAC built in there. Also a partnership with Tidal. You're going to get three free months of Tidal, uh, the Hi-Fi music subscription. I think it's $17.99 a month for one individual, uh, which is pretty cool getting three months of that for free if you pick the headphone module up. I don't know how much it's going to cost, though. That's the biggest thing where I'm at is you don't know how much it's going to cost. I don't think there's been any announcements since that on the price, but the original camera, 360 camera, was like $200 at launch. Yep. Don't think this is going to be cheap. And the phone was seven hundred dollars, so definitely not exactly. cheap. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to be cheap. Just... Yeah, that's, much Samantha, that's you. We're we're picking up a nice feedback noise from you over there, hon. It's. Uh, I have no idea what else to do. I took the headset. <laughs> <laughs> it's like double picking up everything. 
And hey, real quick, uh, the show actually just went live. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but it was not set to public. <laughs> yep, I was about to ask you about that. <laughs> yep. So I'm like, hey, uh, it's weird that we're seeing ourselves live, but the public can't see it because I didn't see any chat rolling up. That's, um, a, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So real quick, we need to give a quick shout out to our sponsors once again, since it was really only for us. So real quick again, we just wanted to do a quick thank you to our sponsor over at Slick Wraps. Make sure you guys visit them over at slickwraps.com. You can also use uh, Coach CWC as a code if you want to get a bigger discount. Um, and later on the show, we're actually going to give away a wrap for one of your phones. So again, thank you so much to Slick Wraps for sponsoring the show. Uh, we just now talked about the Essential Phone and the new module that's coming out for it, which is the magnetic headphone jack. Um, we all thought it's kind of funny that the Essential Phone is dying, but they're still coming out with modulars. I mean, to me, maybe they're doing it because they'll get to sell this stuff later, you know, pulling a, <laughs> a Sony, some proprietary stuff that hopefully, you know, other phone manufacturers will want to buy from them. Because as you guys know, this isn't their first modular device. The first one was actually the 360 camera. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys got a chance to use it or not, but that 360 camera was really good. The camera was terrible because it took so long to take a picture. But the 360 camera was groundbreaking. I, the, I think it was great. It's too bad that they overpriced the device. People weren't ready yet for what it was. They were scared of you know, the manufacturer not being out there that long. So they had a lot of uphill battles. And like you said, Adam, didn't you say they only sold 150,000 units or so? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the figure that, that they're going with. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah that's, that's, that's not a very sustainable uh, growth that you'll be able to just keep coming report, out with them. There's also a report that they may be um, venturing into the smart home products and just, you know, do away at the mobile phones and just go ahead with that. So yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Well, how, how could they be different though? Because they're still gonna be a like a newbie company, really. So how are they gonna be much different? What can they do to really make a mark in the smart home uh, market? Yeah, what, what could they do differently than everybody else? Mm -hmm. They could uh, come out with a camera <laughs> for their phone that works. <laughs> I don't know why they don't get with Samsung or, or Sony. You know, Sony makes 95% of all the glass that goes in these phones. Say, hey, you know, we could have did something with that. It still would have kept the cost down. I don't know. I, I don't know what they were doing. I know they were losing money because of the material that they were using and obviously the design. But when you have, you know, the founder of Google uh, creating a phone, he seems, and he had tons of backers, didn't he? He had huge backing for that system. There, there's no excuse to come out with that. I mean, I, I dinged Razer for coming out with their, their phone camera sucked. <laughs> and the CEO like jumped me on Twitter and I'm like, hey, I'm telling you, it's terrible. It's a fantastic gaming phone, but that camera when it first came out was, it was a potato, Indeed. potato That's cam. <laughs> well, you know, again, you talk about Andy Rubin being the founder of Android, the, the godfather, the creator of Android. Well, that's you right. Can't get and there Android was to run right on your Android device. Again, <laughs> such a laggy oh, and unusable experience. <laughs> you know, I'm using my Note 8, so much more fluid than using the Essentials phone. It's running practically stock Android. Yeah, I, see, I that's understand. what I mean. It doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It's uh, now here's the thing, right? So you go, okay, it's, it's a, a new manufacturing company, new manufacturing process, everything is new. Well, they rushed it out. I mean, because otherwise everything would be working. And then people would complain, well, you didn't get it out in time. So that's the double-edged sword, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You come out too early and you try to, you know, shake the industry and, hey, look at this modular design that everyone was talking about and nobody actually did. But then it comes out and it's, eh, that's a problem too. So what they should have done is probably sold it cheaper, lost a ton of money instead of going the other, instead of going the LG way, right? Coming out mm -hmm. with a phone for $800, four <laughs> months later, right? It's $200 and you get two for free with it, you know. <laughs> and then, maybe, then the people maybe, who bought it at $800 are kind of like, hey, what about me, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, right. They really should have done what um, did what OnePlus did, come out really cheap with some really good specs, and then gradually increase their price every year if it's a good phone. But you can't come out right. being the first phone you've ever made and come out. How much was it? Eight hundred dollars or whatever. Seven hundred. Yes. 
Yeah, we for six ninety nine. I believe it was the original yeah. price. Yeah, that which is the USD price. Rough. Was it was it six ninety nine or seven ninety nine when that first I came out? It was six ninety nine because that was yeah. like the big shocker. It was a little cheaper than the Galaxy S eight or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it was. It, it's so it's right there. I mean, it's it's almost supposed to be competing with the flagships, right? I mean, yeah. that was that's tough. <laughs> and see, that's where they really lost. Is exactly. People that are going to buy the Essentials phone are Android enthusiasts. We're the people right. that buy the OnePlus devices. We're the ones that buy the Nexus 5X from back in a couple of years ago. It wasn't yeah. a great hardware device, uh, you know, plastic, front on the back, felt cheap, honestly. But the software experience was great. And Essentials went all in with the hardware. Great hardware. Really love the hardware on it. Right. But again, the software experience was so lacking. And that's what killed it. That's what killed it. You know, yeah, you can show your phone off, lay it on the table, and have everybody go, ooh, and awe about it. But when it can't do the basic things, like take a photo, search yeah. the web, watch a couple of YouTube videos, what's the point of buying it? That, that, yeah. That's the biggest thing right and, there. You know, and, the, mm-hmm. and the rough part, too, with the price is it's easy for iPhones and Samsungs and everybody to jack that price up because they get to hide it inside of a monthly payment plan. Or the essentials are coming out of the door going, well, you got to cough up 700 plus yep. tax cash <laughs> today. And that, that really stinks people. Cause it wasn't like, well, Hey, we came up with a hundred dollars down and 20 a month for two years. It was 700 cash that you could have bought a gaming laptop with. So now exactly. you're like, Hey, I could have bought an Xbox and a PlayStation four, <laughs> but I can't <laughs> take a picture on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only place you could actually get it on a carrier plan was Sprint, if I recall yeah, correctly. Sprint. And, yeah. You know, and there you God go. Sprint, nobody uses them. Yeah, I was going to say, that's <laughs> so not even a carrier, cares? is it? Yeah, not, not anymore. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, – <laughs> Yeah, that's I, I never understood it. You know, Essential should have come out, $500, yep. decent hardware, great software mm-hmm. experience. And then, again, same way with OnePlus – Hike the price up a little bit, give us better hardware, but keep the software experience because that is the core of the smartphone, the yeah. software experience. You know, people yeah, drive see. BMWs, they don't look like super, not all the time. And there are some fancy looking yeah. ones, but just your normal BMWs, they got great internals, not necessarily the most flashiest outsides, but they perform very, right. very well. You know, that's the same way with, you know, what, what Essential could have done, but they totally that's missed right. the opportunity. Anna, what, what were you going to say, buddy? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm ju- I was just going to say that. It's when the founder of Android is going to be coming out with the company, you're just expecting the software experience to be great. And yeah. I think they just let down in the camera department pretty badly. And then a couple of months later, it was at $450, I think, yeah, 400 right. And you get a code or something to get. Yeah. Give, Which yeah. is crazy. Remember when they lowered it by that $100? Yeah, you're right. I think it dropped down to... I think it was 499 or something on Amazon, you know, so then they could really, you know, what happened is then they started getting the manufacturing down. So then they had enough units that they could actually put it on something because that's probably why T-Mobile, AT&T or Verizon couldn't pick them up. Cause they're like, Hey, we need 3 million units. And they're like, Oh, <laughs> we got 60 and a couple in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, what I mean? Because that's shopper. the other thing. Sprint had 40 people on the network. They're like, dude, we can hook up everyone on Sprint. <laughs> everyone can get one. <laughs> oh, so uh, Sprint, cool. if you're watching, hey, man, it's cool. You know, I feel you. Somebody's got to be last. It's cool. Um, but anyways, so let's move on. How about here's something weird. Now, all of us are into home tech. I'm sure all of you guys have something, right? I've got the, the home device sitting right next to me, the security mm-hmm. system, the nest everything the thermostat so this is this is becoming a big deal right i actually love all the stuff that they're doing so now amazon for the fireside which i'm using a uh, disclaimer i'm using the nvidia shield freaking awesome for streaming <laughs> but the amazon fire tv cube have you guys seen this thing was able to check it out a little bit online yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm really not sure exactly what they're trying to do with this thing. <laughs> like, uh, I, got it's so kind much of money, and the hardware department's kind of bored. Like, guys, go for it. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's thing. literally a cube. It's a streaming box cube that's supposed to interact with the, it's you know, the whole Echo, echo. and a Fire TV in one. If that's what <laughs> yeah. I've gotten from it, correct? Yeah, with, with the, the Fire Roster. Stick. The Fire yeah. Stick meets Google Home or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh. But, but they've also got IR blasters on there to sort of interact with it. I think they've got four or something like that 
uh, okay. one on each side of the cube. And so yeah. that interacts with all your various, um, your home theater system and your TV yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it, it looks very 90-ish, so it might make a, <laughs> make a dent out there. I, I don't know, but honestly, if I saw this in the store, a, I think it's uphill battle because you're like, well, what does it do? And they're like, well, it, it does the same thing your Fire Stick did for 29 bucks you can get now. <laughs> exactly. And they're like, well, with well what, am I, what am I doing with this box? Or what am I going to do everything. with this Wii Cube? <laughs> That's not <laughs> a Wii Cube. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's a tough sell. I'm going to say at $120. Coach is gonna say it's a it's a no go flagrant foul. Nobody's buying it. Moving on. And yeah, prime members can buy it for ninety dollars. Ninety dollars. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh. -uh. Yeah. I'm not, I would take Still. it. I'm more of a Google Home person, anyways. Google yeah, assistant. me too. Yeah, they're all. Yeah. Google Home. Google Home. Yeah, Google, home. Yeah. Google Home. Everybody, Google Home. Google Home. Yeah. Google yeah, Home. Google Home. Google Google home. <laughs> Mantha, do you got your hand? Do you got your sick hand raised with the tissue? Yeah, I did. I do. I do. <laughs> uh, how about this, Dave? Now this is exciting news because I, I know if you guys were watching last season, man, I love my Vive stuff, and I actually have the new uh, HTC Vive Pro. So That's I upgraded, cool. yeah, from the actual regular Vive to the Pro. Phenomenal product. You better make sure you have a beast of a machine to push it because it makes my 1080 like choke. But uh, <laughs> so Dave and Buster's is building HTC Vive equipped VR arcades. And I've seen them doing this over in Asia. Kind of looks like a paintball right area with things you can uh, climb over and obstacles you can duck and hide behind and all this weird crap. But so they're doing this entire equipped VR thing. I think it's phenomenal for VR. What do you guys think? Yeah, it sounds very exciting. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. I would definitely go and play. <laughs> I think um, for VR, when it's so expensive, I think location-based VR is really going to help uh, bing, bing. get reach the ma masses. And so it's going to be true. easy for people, for children, to just go ahead and you know have an experience of VR and just kind of see what it's all about and. Maybe yeah. probably think about picking up one. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like you said, okay, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Jake. Okay, guys, like, no, exactly what you said. Children and even adults. You got to get a very expensive computer. You know, GPU yep. prices are still around. They just want to build a custom PC, but, you know, just buying yeah. one or a laptop, $2,000, and you got to sink into the gear or the Vive, whatever, it is, the Vive or uh, the Oculus. Yeah. You know, a lot of money there. And you got to have the space for it as well. That's another big thing is how much room right. you have to have for it, as you can test to. But, you know, being able to go to a place, actually play with it, check it all out, I think that's the best case scenario for VR, especially when you can really focus on it. Like you said, have the obstacles there for you to yeah. climb over. That's where VR, I think, will truly shine and take off. And then maybe in a decade, maybe I'm right. pushing out there a little too far. That's when we're going to see more VR come to the home. You know, Sony yeah, hasn't had great success. That's, that's why I'm so VR. excited. You know, even like the mobile, right, when they did the mobile stuff i'm like that's awesome because it's opening doors for regular people to go what is this hey this is actually cool this exactly you know, doesn't yeah. look like my old that's nintendo yeah 3d you know stupid looking <laughs> oh this God. is like legit right. so i i love it i and every time they push something like this i get more and more excited because honestly this is the future you know the 3d games you can literally take i don't care you could name any game donkey kong pac-man centipede i don't care the oldest goofiest thing that you'd ever see now put it in 3d and it's like oh my gosh this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> right walk a walk a walk a what <laughs> it's just different it's so unique but you're right if people don't have the money they're they're not you know up to specs on their tech or they're just don't know how to put all this thing together because you're right it's funny because a lot of times i go in best buy and people are over at the oculus rift stand you know like waiting for assistance <laughs> i know yeah and i'm like trying to tell them like you're gonna need this and make sure you have this and they're like really and the funny thing is, is a lot of times after i talk to them they walk right over i show them i say hey here's something you can do right now no expensive equipment it's something, if you don't like it, you can return it with Best Buy's great Best Buy policy. Best Buy for watching. Hook us up, man. You know what's up. Oh, my gosh. Best Buy, you're amazing. I swear. <laughs> Black tie, baby. But anyways, I'm like PSVR. It's a great way to get into it mm. immediately. If you've got a PlayStation, a couple hundred bucks, man, you get in these VR games, boom, done. Check it out. Try it. 
doesn't cost you nothing. Don't need a ton of space. You can sit in your chair. You can stand up, you know? So I'm like, hey, it's it's one of those try before you buys. It's really inexpensive. That's why I like the, uh, what is the Oculus Go? Have you guys even had a chance to fool around with that yet? Anybody? I didn't get a chance to play with the Oculus Go, although I was able to play with one of the Oculus headsets with the Galaxy S7. So similar. Yeah, right. Yeah, I used to, yeah, uh, when I bought that, you know, I tried it with a couple of movies, uh, which was incredible. Yes. Because, yeah, right? It's really immersive because you don't have the cords and, and all the stuff on mm -hmm. you. You can, like, just sit back and really get into it with your headphones. And, you know, it's completely black. There's nothing that bothers you, uh, you know, which will be great when we get wireless for the HTC yes. and Oculus. Oh, my gosh. When we go wireless, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can see a, a back here, you see the mount. Yeah. That's that's for the unit right there. So <laughs> the other one's over here. But when we so go wireless, it's going to be great. So is for someone who has the Vive, uh, is it a worthy upgrade to the Vive Pro or not yet? Um, I'd say for the money, no. I think if if you really are into your tech and you really love doing this, like, you know, I bought it day one, right? So <laughs> I was the guy who spent 800 bucks anyways the first day the stuff came out because I'm like, yeah, got to have it. <laughs> so, again, it's one of those. And now it's great. But it's not it's not worth it enough to re go buy that headset. Yeah, geek out with it because you're gonna get the same experience with the other HTC Vive and at its price point now it's 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 a great value. But yeah, to to spend that much on just the headset, which does not include the controllers or the mounts or the sensors or anything, yeah, no, it's it's not worth the money. <laughs> it looks clear, it's better resolution. Same resolution as the Samsung Odyssey. If you guys are into the Windows mixed reality, it's the exact same resolution as that. So you don't get as much screen door pixelation and all that, but sorry, I could talk about Vive and VR stuff forever. Yeah, I'm just gonna up the whole conversation. Really <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so I think it's cool. I'm excited. Um, which is funny too, because side note, I saw today that Dave and Buster's stock actually went up in value where all the other stocks were kind of trading sideways. So I think the fact that they're moving into futuristic concepts and, and doing, yeah. you know, instead of we all just playing basketball for tickets, this is something cool when we walk in and yeah. get a beer and watch your buddy fall down and freak out and get scared. <laughs> I'm all over that. <laughs> I put one of these on Samantha, get her drunk, push her in the middle. I'll <laughs> be there for days. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> um. Moving on, so how about this? So now with all the new ARM stuff that's coming out, Intel is talking about all these dual screen concept PCs. What do you guys think of that? I think because Microsoft and um, Dell are already kind of on the dual, piece, dual screen game, they're just trying to come out with a concept so that manufacturers can get on it. I think they're doing the electronic print display as well as the normal display kind of um, designs for the dual screen. Yeah, and I mean we've seen it, right? The Lenovo, uh, yoga, what is it? Yeah, Lenovo. Yoga. Yeah. Yep. Yoga. So we've seen it. We've seen all that before. Um, but the cool thing is, you know, the whole always on PC. The thing that I guess it's it's kind of weird for me, right? Because the thing about the always on for me is I'm like, well, I can always tether my phone, so I don't really ever need an always on device. But I like the fact that it sips battery juice, kind of like also with my iPad Pro. I don't have to worry about having a cellular, ser uh, cellular service. I don't have to tell it now tether to my phone, even though it's really easy with Apple. So, I mean, I can see where it's going, but for somebody, I mean, look at the prices that, what was it? The uh, Surface Book Pro came out, same thing, that has that processor always on so you can put a chip on it. It's like $1,800. It's six or $700 more if you want to get it with a cellular service built in. <laughs> Like, yeah, no. Yeah. I get fifteen dollars a month to tether your phone. You know, it's like I. Exactly. It's one of those we're fixing things that I don't know need to be fixed. It's you a know, very in the niche of the market. That's really yeah. Interesting in something like that. It's just it's almost for the sake of saying, well, we have to go in some direction, otherwise we're just stale, right? We're not doing right. anything. So, which and, and honestly, there's a lot of that that happens in industry because if we don't do this part. <laughs> they won't invent something for the next piece that isn't a flop. So, you know, you got to kind of go through <laughs> the whole, nobody wants that. <laughs> and then, oh, but that 
came from that. Yeah. We like that. Time up for real innovation. <laughs> yeah. So again, you know, it's one I think, I think like you guys are talking about, it's a lot of R and D just trying to be first. We want to be innovators. <laughs> well, I mean, who are they marketing this to though? Like well, who is a consumer for this product? Uh, well, I think it would be business because who else is going to spend the extra six or seven hundred dollars on it, you know? Mm -hmm. And the problem with business is you usually to sell a ton of them, you have to go through all these corporate leases. So uh, they're not selling them at Best Buy. <laughs> 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 so, I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> the always so, on PC, I don't really get the dual screen, though. I like the yeah. idea of the dual screen. I'm yeah. liking that. Something different. I yeah. know it's weird typing on a, you know, a screen. Oh, I love that, it. You're right. I, I, I think it's cool. You know, I completely ripped it off of the, uh, what was it, Nintendo 3DS? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here's what's funny, and I'm sure you guys probably remember, but dual screen laptops came out about eight years ago. So it's already been done. This is nothing new. It came Smart out. and ready for it. No, yeah, nobody bought one. Then the concept that they were trying to sell then is, well, if we flip it in this mode, you can both see what we're working at the same time. <laughs> Everybody's like, that's, no, we're not yeah, doing no. that. So for it's me, been out. It's already happened. I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, I think for me what would be interesting about it is being able to do more work on two screens. That, that's yeah. just the way I see it. I'd actually have to get my hands on one and use one. But I'm intrigued by yeah. the idea of dual screen laptops. I like yeah. the idea of what Asus is doing with the trackpad, a 5.5 inch display down there. Yep. I think yep. that's really cool as well. So I'm, I'm all for it. I want to see something yeah. different than my typical laptop. Uh, you know, just yeah, I agree. We got to move forward in some way, right? We got to do some. And um, <clears throat> our body, our, our buddy uh, Ron Wazab Lunsford's in here, a uh, Patreon member. Thank you so much for supporting me. Um, but he's, he brings up a good point. <laughs> he's always bringing up good points. He says that uh, it's a great revenue stream for MS, which it could be. Eventually, it could be. And he said that they're attacking the Chromebook market. Now, I don't know about Chromebook yet, only because of the price, right? Chromebook was invented to reduce all of the price. It was supposed to be the lowest price system you could get. And the reason they were doing that is not just the low to mid market. They were trying to target all the education and business side, which worked right until Apple resisted, came back and said, well, we'll give you a bunch of little stuff because <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows that or not, but that's how Apple did all the donation stuff. They said, well, we'll give you a million iPads for free so you, mm -hmm. you can have it in the school. And now they can say we're all in the schools so that the programmers will keep developing a tax write off. And that's how that happened. So <laughs> that's what happened to the Chromebooks. Um, which, you know, if you guys haven't seen, I, I did a review on that pixel book for one yeah. of the nicest piece of hardware is out. It, it was awesome, but it's a Chromebook. So the software. Yeah. To get the software. yeah, you're kind of stuck. You're kind of limited. And everybody's like, Oh, well you can open it up with Linux and everything. Yeah, sure. But then you got to do all that, right? There's a ton of right. stuff the, you have to do. The, the average user is not going to do that. Me as the advanced right. user, yeah, probably will. Right. I, I am the nerdier person. I will. I, I probably would do something like that. But handing it to my brother, my mom, my grandma, yeah, they are right. gonna do that. They just want to be able right. to use it, and that you know they can't just use it. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's right. And and the funny thing is, if you guys remember, Chromebook couldn't even run like regular app, or I'm sorry, it couldn't run like Google apps in the beginning. It was literally yeah. like an iPad copycat that could only run Android apps. <laughs> So then the new Chromebooks were like, well, hey, maybe we should make it so we can actually run like Chrome and stuff. <laughs> so that that's when they allowed the widgets and the extensions and the add-ins, which opened it up because then I was selling this to corporate environments, which where we were able to lock them down and go, well, you can only get these. You can't download this. You're part of this security group, so you have this. So that's what I mean. That's that's what they were targeting. Super low end, but nice hardware. I mean, it was it was great. So Ron in here says uh, real quick, he said uh, Windows 10 S is running free mode until you pay $50 to upgrade. That's right. But actually, if you remember the first year it was released, it was a free upgrade to a regular operating system. You didn't have to keep it on the S. So again, and it's funny because that didn't happen at first, but everybody was complaining, right? It was kind of like when the first Windows Surface Pro came out and they're like, this OS is locked down. We can't do anything with it. You guys remember that? <laughs> It didn't sell, and everybody thought that the first Surface was going to flop, and here we are five later, but that's why. So, again, with this one, they're like, ah, 
maybe you shouldn't just say S <laughs> for student or security. <laughs> but I don't know. Tis the way of tech, right? We release something. Oh, wait, that ain't working. Let's uh, quick quickly recall it and call it something. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is indeed. <laughs> Change it into something fast. They're, they're on to us. <laughs> uh, here, now, here's a crazy one. This is a big one for all of us since all of us are in social media like 24-7. <laughs> Instagram might allow you to post videos now <laughs> up to an hour long. Who do you it's think they're that. competing with when that happens? Like YouTube? YouTube? YouTube. Yeah, right? Isn't that crazy? Because they know how important it is now to keep yeah. eyeballs, right? That's Facebook, yep. YouTube, Instagram, they're all fighting for the same thing. We want to keep you engaged as long as we can so we can either sell you crap, market you crap, or have people buy crap to put on our crap to, to show you all day. <laughs> yeah. um, this, this would be crazy. Am I right? I, I think this would be crazy, and I think uh, 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 this could be a game changer, honestly. The, the what, way that what do you think this apart, means for us as YouTubers, though? Because – we could finally have, do you think we could finally have a competing thing like, okay, we can start doing our videos over on Instagram, getting AdSense yeah. from that or whatever? Yeah, but, right. You know, we could have been dominating it for a while now. They can pretty much do whatever with us. So, yeah, that's some true. kind of heat, you know, yeah, it might make things better for us as uh, content creators. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's weird because, I mean, YouTube. <laughs> The problem is they're so big you can't compete, right? Yep. So you have to have something else. But guess what? That's like Twitch. You want to know why yeah. Twitch is booming? And here's a quick hint for all of you YouTube and streamers and everybody that I know. You go to Twitch, you make way more money, but it's a different ball game. We talked about that last season. YouTube, you get recurring revenue from ads and affiliate links and things like that. Twitch, you get the money right now. So let's say I did this show on Twitch. We'd be getting paid right now. Donations, not the super chat garbage, right? Donations, subscribers, followers on the channel, bits. Like, you want to know why some of my most famous friends have gone over there and they do all their live shows on there? Because they tell me they make five to ten times as much per show over on Twitch as they do on YouTube because all they can get on YouTube is this goofy ad sense. Which you guys know is horrible. Yes. Unless we say it right, unless we're like, oh, this lens is amazing. Check out my link down below. <laughs> if we don't do that, <laughs> or we're not getting nothing. I, we're getting and, nothing. Yeah, with Instagram, the new service, I think they're gonna start promoting it by having better terms for content creators, better ad revenue terms. So they try and get content creators on their team and then Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, they, they post like uh, 800 million viewers, something like that, in um, yeah, September yeah. of 2017. So, they're well, gonna and um, and hey, and thank you by the way for everybody that's joined in here. We've got uh, the Everyday Dad, phenomenal channel. If you guys have not seen his stuff, he does great work. I love th this guy's awesome. He's a, a big up and comer. I can see him banging easily 100k this year uh, as far as subscriber goes. So make sure you guys check him out. But he said here, he said the Instagram compression is so terrible. You're right. But here's yep. the thing with the compression on the videos, the way that it works uh, with corporate and everything else is they can go to Microsoft and they go to Amazon and go, hey, we want to use your computing power. Turn it on. There's no more compression problems. <laughs> this isn't the olden days where, you, you know, YouTube have 70 million servers sitting somewhere, you know, uh, out on a farm field cooking up the space just to try to give you the best videos you can. This stuff can go everywhere. Microsoft, remember, built their entire backbone on the backs of Xbox and all of us $60 a year subscribers. Guess what they were doing with that money? They were building the infrastructure to have all of the cloud-based systems they have. When all that means is there are 70 million servers that are sitting out there that are my business people talk to it just says, hey, Instagram, guess what? You just got another million people that are viewing this. And it goes, hey, Amazon or Microsoft, we want to use your resources now to beef up this system, this backbone, and there will be no more compression problems. So <clears throat> it, it might be a problem today, but when they make the money and you can see it, it, it won't be a problem tomorrow. I guarantee you. You, you know how that works. <laughs> My biggest concern, though, is yeah. – 
the Instagram aspect ratio. Is it going to be yeah. stuck there on my feed? Can I blow it up in full screen? Is it going to be a more immersive experience? That's what I'm interested in seeing. Yeah, I, yeah I, that's I true. I want to see a longer Instagram video. I think that's going to be great. I yeah. call a lot of people to do photos and do yeah. behind the scenes edits. I like that. And they have to speed it up so much. That's going to be cool. But for any like real content, you, you got to have a little bit of a change to the way the Instagram works with videos. Yeah, and they might. You know, it might be a UI change. Um, yeah, they might have a pop up. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, it could be a pop up. Yeah, right, exactly. Click on the video if you want to see it, and mm -hmm. then full screen. Um, and and you could just scroll. I mean, Facebook does it now, right? Yeah. Facebook yeah, videos, yeah. you're scrolling through, you know, right, Samantha? You click on it, boom, it's it's full video. Yeah. So it's not even hard to program for that. They've already got everything built in. They're already making tons of money. Because here's the thing: is Instagram does not want people jumping off of them to go anywhere else. And Instagram is huge, which is funny. Cause I don't know about you guys, but it's like the last thing I think of when I'm taking a picture is, oh gosh, I got to get on Instagram. <laughs> I'm a Twitter <laughs> guy, right? I'm a, I'm a Twitter freak. Instagram's like the last thing, but it's funny because when I put something on Instagram, which like today, I forgot to put it on Instagram. If I would have put it on Instagram, we probably had 50 more people in here. Yep. Like they pay attention and it's shown. It isn't like this. The funny thing is, right? I have over 20,000 subscribers and we went live. No one was notified that we went live. Not one person. I had to tweet because it out. Because YouTube thinks those 20,000 people aren't interested in seeing your content when they go live. Isn't that crazy? What if we were running a two-hour show and I had a million people on here? I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. why we're going to Twitch. Stop being stupid, YouTube. <laughs> Watch me get flagged for saying that. <laughs> Demonetized. Demonetized, yeah. <laughs> <Right>, shut down. <laughs> Coach is out for good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, hey, listen, the show's running long. That's completely my fault. I'm just excited to have all you guys with me. Um, excited to be here. Show. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much, Samantha and Jake and Adam, for being that's here. Awesome. Oh, it was so great. Listen, I want to do a giveaway, though, man. We cannot do a show. I we, We've forgotten before, and we've doubled up on a show. But listen, I want to give, I want to give a wrap away. Um, let me pull this up real quick for slick wraps. Any wrap you want for your phone can be cases. Don't get me in trouble. I gave away some cases last year and uh, I got slapped. <laughs> <laughs> so if I do a case, it's going to come from me. But listen, um, I want to do one right now and add it. Since you're my seasoned vet, you were here with me last year. You know the you know the rules, okay? Yeah. You can pick anybody you want. You can make them choose a random number. You can do a trivia question. Whatever <laughs> you want to do. Let's let's get a winner though. Let's get them in here right now. Slickwraps.com. Any wrap you want for any device or any phone you want. And listen, after the show, make sure you direct tweet me. Even if it's just public, say, hey coach, I won. Let me know. Coach CWC. I'll make sure you get it. I just think um, one of the new, I mean, Jake or Samantha should be doing this because they're new here, and I think. Um... No, go ahead. <laughs> Who, whoever you, you want. It. It's up to you, veteran. You tell them. Say, hey, <laughs> who wants to do it? <laughs> Jake. Go ahead, Jake. Jake, go ahead, Jake. Yeah. Jake. Oh, I, see, I see how it is. Okay, okay. Uh, wow, I'm on a spot with a trivia question, and I, of course, can't think of one. Um, it could be ask anything simple as well. Not a big deal. Anything simple. All right, how about this one? What were the two modules announced alongside the LG G5? Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. I yeah. do. All right, so Huge the first one to answer that right. question, the first, uh, what is it, two modules for the LG G5, LG G5 yeah. wins a wrap from slickwraps.com. Leave it in the chat while the show's going on. We're going to give you just a couple more minutes. We're going to wrap it up. Um, if, we, if no one's – Oh, I see what you did there. If, <laughs> he wrapped it up. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> oh, Good one. hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Easy Computer Solutions is in the house and he didn't even say anything? Come on, man. Oh my God. <laughs> That's my he dog. Wants the, he wants that wrap. <laughs> he does, dude. I'm going to hook him up. So, Jake, you since since this was your contest, is he the winner? No, it's, it, that is wrong. Bam, not for you, <laughs> Easy Computer Solutions. You better go back and ask your friend Google. <laughs> Google is there not your friend modules, today. I totally missed them. Not the, two, the two modules I'm thinking of that I believe are announced alongside were not the battery and camera. 
There's still time. Yeah. There is still time, guys. There's yeah. still time. Nope. Uh, oh. Seeing... No, no, I'm Ron that. said battery and Ron... speaker. Yep. It wasn't that. Nope. Hey, what's up? Uh, real quick, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to everybody in here. Just... Yeah, it is. Nobody Frank, liked the LGD5. Frank, so... <laughs> Easy Computer Solutions, Ron Lunsford, Samit. What's up, Samit? Samit has been with me a long time, man. Very faithful, awesome guy right there. Paul, glad to have you in here. The Everyday Dad, man, I appreciate all your work, dude. You are the next up-and-comer. Um, here's a weird one, Dating for Sex. Link in my channel. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, weird name. <laughs> We're not clicking your link. We're not clicking your link. You want to sponsor the channel? We might click your link. Okay, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> they, oh, easy just got on. Uh, Sam Cam, said it was Sam Plus and Skin Only module. Sam, got it. Yeah, Sam, yeah. It. Sam it is the winner. Good job, Sam. It. Hey, you know how to get a hold of me, man. I think we both follow each other on Twitter, so... Shoot me a message just to remind me, hey, coach, I won that. I'll make sure you get it. Um, I want to do one more thing, and this this is funny. This is for my buddy Ron because I know, I know, I know my HTC fans love it when I talk about Apple products. <laughs> oh, yes, iOS 12. Let's talk about iOS 12. <laughs> <laughs> so iOS 12, man, okay. here iOS 12, here's what's funny is um, so I'm running it on uh, – on the iPhone 10 right now, which is cool, except the maps don't work. <laughs> Apple Maps no, or Google Maps? Both. Did they ever? Oh. <laughs> yeah. It, it, Apple yeah, did they ever? <laughs> <laughs> Samantha, did they ever work? <laughs> oh, that's that's amazing. But no, they GPS does not work on my phone. I pulled the, you know, the whole airplane mode and turn it on and off in your privacy uninstalled the apps reinstalled i tried the apple maps google maps and the ways and nothing nothing works gps Data doesn't work but we got dangerous. group notification nope. so which is funny because i went out there and i'm like hey is anybody having this problem nothing just dead air <laughs> apple's probably like nope <laughs> nope <don't laughs> strike on you <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, you too, Everyday Dad. Thanks for joining, man. I really appreciate you being here, buddy. You're going to be a guest on the show. I know it. Yeah, looking for it. Everyday Dad right there. If he can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I'm sure I said that wrong, but hey, man, thank you. So, and, and today, here's what's funny too. Did you guys see I sent you that, um, that message about, uh, what is it? What do they call it? Watch OS 5. I was yep. bricking it was literally bricking the watches <laughs> oh my gosh so you could not put that beta development on there and the funny thing is i got a screenshot of it i was going to do a video but you know me man i got a million videos that just don't get released is um they put up a warning on there it's like do not do not install this <laughs> oh my we god yeah they're like we're running into issues <laughs> no, i'm like oh is. my gosh could you imagine how many people right after that developer show was like, yeah, I want a walkie-talkie. <laughs> Oops, it doesn't work anymore. Well, the funny thing is it doesn't tell time. developers will download it. That's the funny thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, oh, no. So I went out there today, and it said it's resolved. I did go out there. I put it on my watch. Um, I'll let you guys know on the next show if it's blown up anything or – caught fire or something ridiculous but right now it literally is acting like a regular iphone watch <laughs> that's to. That's yeah true. that's true it's just hopefully gonna work now it is cool though being able to raise your wrist and just say something without saying the the hey command that is kind of cool on the watch but I don't know. Still, though, here, here's here's a fun fact for you, though, since it's in beta development. So you pick up your watch, right, and you say the command, and the watch now talks to you back. Oh, you would like to know the weather? Sure. And then it goes, <laughs> it hits your phone, and the phone does it. <laughs> I'm like, what if my phone is in a? Yeah, I'm like, what if my phone is in another room? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> What's I going on, man? Much. I think that's intentional. Oh, it is, right? It's like, no, yeah. don't use your watch. It's LTE, and we want you to not tether them, but don't use it like that. <laughs> You're using it wrong. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. Ron says, Apple, don't install this. Everyone, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, listen, I want to do one more giveaway. We ran really long today. Um, this one's from me. This isn't from Slick Raps. Thank you, though, Slick Raps. Today's my birthday. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but oh, happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Appreciate it. 45 today. I know it's it's weird, and, it, and I, I got a lot of gray hairs to show for that. <laughs> I love it. That's pretty awesome. All right. But hey, listen, since we're talking about iOS, I want to give away a $25 gift card right now. Thanks, Paul. And uh, since Jake, you did the last one, Samantha, do you want to give this away any way you want? Give this to anybody you want that's still sticking or that's still stuck around on here. Um, and what I'll do when you guys win this is I'll just literally scratch the back and then I'll just DM you um, the code so you guys can just automatically put it in there. You don't have to wait for mail and all that crap, but um, <laughs> shout out. Ron, thanks a lot, man. He said, dude, this episode was brought to you by Geritol. <laughs> dude, that's horrible. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, all right, Samantha, go ahead. Trivia right. question. Anything you want to do, it's, it's, it's your floor. Mm. All right. Um, we did a trivia already, so let's just do a guess if the number. So Ooh, there we go. That'll be a quick one then. Good. Pick a number between one and thirty-one. One and thirty-one. And Sam, it no, you cannot win two. <laughs> Don't just come in here typing one through thirty-one, dude. I know you. I know your game. Look <laughs> at the bot running with the numbers. He will be like, roll. <laughs> <laughs> You know at home he's got like 87 boxes of winning stuff. <laughs> yeah, I get oh, nothing. The numbers are rolling in. Oh, look at Ron. He is Ron. He's yeah. keying through. Look at tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Let's play a bit of bingo. Right? We got 31. We got four. We got 16. We got one, two, three, 29, 28. Two people were close, but still not close enough. Very close. 17. Come on, one through thirty-one. You guys got to type faster. Twenty-two. Sam, you can't win anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Quit it. Twenty-five. Twenty-nine. I feel like we're playing bingo. Should they yeah, say exactly. like a letter bingo. C? Sixteen. I should definitely say bingo when somebody wins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hashtag bingo for tonight's game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hashtag bingo, Ron won. Ron Lunsford, he said 14. That's it. Ron is the winner. Hey, 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 that's awesome. See, Ron, everybody, everybody's a winner on this show. <laughs> Changing the tech scene. Listen, thank you guys so much. I appreciate everybody being here. Jake, it was awesome having you. Samantha, thank you so much for joining, even though you were sick. Juan Bagnell, if you're watching the program, man, sorry you could not make it today, but I do appreciate it. We are going to have a lot of special guests. Um, you would not believe the guest list that I have. That way, I can call anytime I want. <laughs> so we're we're going to have a great season. Uh, at it, thanks for coming back. Um, no, I must not be. have beat you up too bad last year, so we'll try harder this year. <laughs> 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 thanks a lot. Thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate it, and we will see you guys same coach channel, same coach time. See ya. See you guys.